6.30 p.m. Hello, I'm Sharon Tong on News 5 Tonight. Good news for those looking to buy an HDB resale flat. Official figures show the cash premium has fallen nearly 20%. Nine weeks jail. A former principal is the first to be sentenced in the case involving paid sex with a minor. Japan and the U.S. agree to move thousands of Marines from Okinawa to other Asia-Pacific locations. You participate, you take that risk. Lah. And that warning from the mayor of Kuala Lumpur as police step up security at Merdeka Square on the eve of the banned Bursay protest. First tonight, the cash premium for HDB resale flats has fallen about 18% for all types of units. Figures for the first quarter of this year released by the Housing Development Board today confirm earlier data provided by real estate companies. It appears to be the market adjustment that many analysts have been predicting. Latest figures show that COV numbers have come down significantly in the first quarter of this year compared to Q4 2011. The drop was seen across almost all flat types and estates. For example, a three-room flat in Topayo had a median COV of $30,000 in Q4. This dropped to $22,000 in Q1. Property watchers say the ramp-up in supply of built-to-order or BTO flats has given home buyers more options. Lower-income families, they have another option of buying from BTO. So they do not actually need to go into the resale market. So they have a bit more bargaining power if they choose to buy in the resale or they can choose to buy in the uh, BTO market. The number of flats that changed hands also saw a small drop. Property watchers expect resale prices to stabilise for the rest of the year. The HDB rental segment, however, strengthened in the first quarter, rising 10%. Experts say renters may see HDB flats as an increasingly attractive option over private property, as the price gap between both segments continues to widen. The private property rental has a fair bit moved up and also at the same time the overall quantum of the private property prices and the rental are much higher. And today most of the companies, the housing allowance are also relatively uh, constrained or limited. And more people are looking at HDB estates that are very well connected with amenities. Property watchers say the increase in transactions is unlikely to have a huge impact on rental prices. As seen over the last few quarters, HDB rental prices have remained fairly stable. Experts say there is an ample supply of such flats in the market. As for private home prices, they registered their first fall since the second quarter of 2009, dipping by 0.1%. Analysts say the lack of market activity in the central districts contributed to the price fall. And the DBSS public housing project in Pasiris has received more than 100 applications after being launched today. Most of the potential buyers are from the area or from Tampanis and Sume. Many are young first-timers or second-timers with young families. Pasiris 1 is believed to be the last DBSS development after the government halted land sales for such projects. Singapore and Vietnam are taking bilateral cooperation beyond the economic sphere to establish a strategic partnership. The President of Singapore expressed his support for this as he wrapped up a five-day visit to Vietnam. The Vietnam-Singapore Industrial Park symbolised warm ties between both countries. Rounding off his first overseas visit as head of state, President Tony Tan Keng Yam said there's room for relations to be taken further. So cooperation in promoting international peace and security, anti-terrorism and deterrence of transnational crime are on the cards as both countries establish a strategic partnership. To foster an environment for economic cooperation, Dr Tan said Singapore companies can be encouraged to partner Vietnamese firms to invest in surrounding countries like Laos, Cambodia and Myanmar. The Vietnamese companies over the last 20 years now have matured, they have grown. They are now in the position not only to develop and invest within Vietnam, they also want to invest outside Vietnam. We have expertise in this area of developing investments outside our own country. I think that uh, this could be a very fruitful area and a new dimension to cooperation. The president said it's important that countries don't raise more barriers to trade. Hence, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, 
which include Singapore and Vietnam, plays a part towards greater economic integration and development of an Asia-Pacific free trade area. Now, the ongoing issue of conflict in the South China Sea was raised during the visit. In discussions, Dr Tan said both Singapore and Vietnam agreed that the parties involved should resolve the situation peacefully. Vietnam is a claimant state to disputed territory, the source of the conflict, while Singapore is not. It is very important for us uh, to ensure uh, that there is freedom of navigation uh, of ships in the South China Sea, as well as to see that disputes between the claimant countries are resolved in accordance with the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea. Dr Tan also noted that in a slowing global economy, Singapore and Vietnam share a similar outlook in harnessing opportunities within an emerging Asia. So it's important the association of Southeast Asian nations continues to progress towards establishing an economic community by 2015. Dylan Lo, Channel News Asia, in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Japan and the United States have announced a deal to streamline the U.S. military presence in Okinawa. The U.S. will move 9,000 Marines from the island to other parts of the Asia-Pacific. It hopes this will ease a chronic source of Japanese unhappiness, but it's also part of a wider U.S. military strategy in the region. Okinawa has been home to around half of the 47,000 U.S. service personnel in Japan since World War II. It's a key element of the U.S. military presence in Asia, being closer to Taiwan than Tokyo. But it's also a cause of tension. Okinawans have been calling for the removal of the bases since 1995, when a 12-year-old schoolgirl was raped by three U.S. servicemen. Around 5,000 of the U.S. Marines leaving Okinawa will be heading for Guam. Tokyo will foot a third of the $8.6 billion cost of the relocation. The rest of the Marines are to be redeployed to Hawaii and Australia. No definite time frame has been indicated. The deal had stalled for years over the issue of the Futenma U.S. airbase. Okinawans say the airbase in an urban area is dangerous and noisy. In 2006, the U.S. agreed to a troop scale-down if it could keep the airbase in Okinawa, but at a quieter coastal spot. But this did not go down well with Okinawans, who want the airbase removed altogether. The latest agreement delings the two issues, helping the airlines work around this central but still unresolved dispute. The deal comes ahead of Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda's visit to Washington. It is the eve of the Bursay 3.0 rally in the Malaysian capital and police have obtained a court order to stop anyone gathering at Merdeka Square from midnight until 1st of May. Those who defy the order could be arrested. Police have also barricaded the area. The Bursay group is demanding electoral reforms ahead of upcoming polls. No one is above the law, says KL City Mayor Ahmad Fuad Ismail, while he's not against people exercising their constitutional right to assemble and demonstrate, the mayor says he has a bigger duty to maintain public order. Please do not disturb, you know, daily life of uh, KLI. Do not disturb, you know. There are small traders like this uh, uh, hawkers. There are you know, small people like taxi drivers. You know. There are people who you know, want to have activities. You know. Why must we disrupt? You respect the law. You respect others. Now, ahead of Bursay 3.0 rally this Saturday, whereby the organizers hope to kickstart with a peaceful sit-in at 2 p.m. local time here at Datara Merdeka, the city mayor has ordered the entire square to be barricaded. Now, security is tight. Police and enforcement team from the city hall are seen patrolling the area. Now, Merdeka Square is now a no-man's zone. While the people can gather outside and protest, the city mayor warned that those who do so must be prepared for any possible consequences. If you, you participate, you take the risk. Lah. Anything can happen. Sebab apa? Nobody really guarantee. I don't know whether history repeated itself. In the Bursay 2.0 rally last July, riot police fired tear gas to disperse thousands of people who had taken to the streets, calling for free and fair elections. Over a thousand were arrested and scores were injured during the police crackdown. This time round, the police insist that they have the situation under control. Kita mempunyai uh, unit polis yang kita ada mencukupi untuk menangani isu ini. Yeah. Apa juga unit yang ada yang sesuai untuk kita gunakan, kita akan gunakan. Yeah. 
The coalition of 84 NGOs have promised to double the size of last year's turnout, piling pressure on Prime Minister Najib to delay elections until all the reforms are implemented. Melissa Go, Channel News Asia, Kuala Lumpur. Well, Malaysia's foreign minister is still hoping to avert any trouble. I remain hopeful that a compromise can still be reached even this late hour. And I appeal to Bursi organizers to work with us. He urged Bursi to work with the government to carry out a peaceful and legal protest. And for only a one of China's best-known dissidents, blind lawyer Chen Guangcheng, has escaped from house arrest. He confirmed this in a video posted online and made an emotional appeal to Premier Wen Jiabao to keep his family safe. He named several government officials who he said had abused him, his wife and child when he was confined to his home. Troops are reportedly surrounding the house in Shandong. Chen apparently slipped out on Sunday, but his family is still there. Sources confirm that he is now far away, but deny reports that he's at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. Chen is known for uncovering rights abuses under China's one-child policy, like forced ser sterilizations and late-term abortions. He was jailed in 2006 and moved to house arrest in 2010. Coming up on News 5, a medical first in the U.S. Doctors there have successfully recycled a kidney. And it's bye-bye Barcelona. Pep Guardiola bowed out after presiding over arguably one of the greatest eras in club football. Welcome back. The first of 48 men charged with having sex, having paid sex with an underage girl has been sentenced. Lee Lip Hong is being jailed for nine weeks. He's the former principal of Peichun Public School. When he first turned up in court to be charged a week ago, he was a picture of calm. But the mood took a solemn turn as Lee Lip Hong, clad in a suit, appeared in court for his sentencing. The 39-year-old pleaded guilty to paying $500 for the 17-year-old girl's sexual services at Hotel 81 Ben Coolen on 26 September in 2010. Another similar charge, he'd engaged her services on a separate occasion, was taken into consideration. Lee learned of the girl's services from an Internet Vice website, which stated that the girl was 18 years old. He then made a booking with the girl through her pimp. His lawyer, Melanie Ho, argued that the girl and her pimp had told Lee that she was 19 years old, and he did not suspect otherwise. But senior district judge Si Ki Un said that Lee had chosen to actively seek out her services and made this decision consciously. In sentencing, the judge also stressed the need to reinforce a message of deterrence. He highlighted the girl's age, saying the girl lacked maturity and was entitled to legal protection, and any presumed willingness on her part had no mitigating value. Lee told the court he was fully ashamed of his actions which have caused pain and harm to his family, especially his wife, and they intend to reaffirm their wedding vows. When the jail sentence was passed, Lee was seen wiping tears from his eyes. <coughs> Ms Ho, who had pleaded to the court to impose a fine, said that her client was remorseful and understood that he made a very serious mistake. Our client accepts his punishment. And um, as you have seen from the start, he has been ready to face the consequences of his mistake. Um, he looks forward to moving on and putting all this behind him. He also wishes for forgiveness. Lee could have been jailed for up to seven years and fined. Now, at the public inquiry into last year's MRT disruptions, the spotlight today was on confusion over bus bridging services after trains broke down on 15th December. Service operations managers, or SOMs, who coordinated efforts to help commuters took the stand. One from Orchard Station said three or four buses went to the wrong bus stop. Another from Bishan Stadium, Bishan Station said commuters waited more than 40 minutes before 10 buses arrived at the same time. 
time. And one manager from Novena station said buses may have taken the wrong routes and bypassed some stations where they were supposed to stop. It was also revealed that SOMs did not have direct contact with those in charge of the buses. This has now been revised with SOMs getting SMS updates. Elsewhere, fast food giant Kentucky Fried Chicken has been ordered to pay some eight million U.S. dollars in damages to an Australian girl who suffered severe brain damage after eating a chicken wrap. The Twister wrap contained Salmonella bacteria that made her so ill she went into a coma and even received last rites. Monica Saman was seven when she ate the wrap at a KFC outlet in Sydney in 2005. She survived but is now intellectually disabled and wheelchair bound and needs round the clock care as a result. Now these two men in the US are part of a medical first. Doctors in Chicago re-transplanted a kidney from 27-year-old Ray Fearing into 67-year-old Erwin Gomez. Mr. Fearing's body had rejected the kidney his sister donated. When that happens, the organ is usually thrown away. But with tens of thousands on the waiting list, doctors decided to recycle it. There was a risk the kidney would not recover and function successfully. But one year on, Mr. Gomez is going strong and says he's got a new lease of life. News 5 will be back with a quick check on business also. Are you ready for that twang when yes. it hits and everything just goes boing? A decades old tradition that hits all the right notes at one college in the US. Stay tuned. In business news, DBS Group Holdings has booked a better than expected record profit of $933 million for the first quarter of this year. Some analysts say this puts it on track to beat last year's record earnings of $3 billion. But they warn that DBS growth plans may take a hit if its bid to buy Bank Danamon Indonesia falls through. Samsung appears to have overtaken Nokia as the world's top seller of mobile phones. According to industry estimates, it sold more than 93 million handsets in the first quarter. It also topped the smartphone space, its Galaxy phone outselling Apple's iPhone. Samsung booked record profit of over 4 billion US dollars for the quarter. And here are the market numbers. Labour chief has delivered his May Day message to workers. He says the country must generate a virtuous cycle of economic and social gain. That means enabling businesses to grow while at the same time ensuring real wage increases for employees. Singapore's business environment is getting more challenging with higher rental, utility and wage costs, says the Labour chief. With higher costs of living, Mr Lim Sui Se does acknowledge that there is a need to speed up real wage increases and also to slow down the widening of the income gap. But he also cautions that there is no quick fix to increasing wages. That's because investments, jobs and talent can go anywhere in a highly competitive world, says Mr Lim. The quick and easy solution may work for one year, we work for two years, but in the long run, I think uh, there will be more, I think there'll be more pain uh, than gain. Uh, so that, that's the reason why the tripartite partners in Singapore, uh, we uh, always set aside in terms of making sure that the, the gain that we want to secure for our workers, for our uh, businesses, for our uh, economy, uh, must be something that is sustainable. NTUC Edge is monitoring economic activities and retrenchments closely and preparing for downturns. And as the inflow of foreign workers slows down in Singapore, Mr Lim urges everyone to make better use of every worker at all levels, including lower-wage workers.
in football, Barcelona coach Pep Guardiola has announced that he's leaving the club at the end of the season. At a news conference this evening, he said he was worn down and needed a break. Assistant coach Tito Villanova will take over. Now, this comes after a woeful week for Barca. They exited the Champions League with a semi-final loss to Chelsea. They also lost to arch-rivals Real Madrid in La Liga, all but ending their slim title hopes. But in Guardiola's four years in charge, Barca were widely regarded to have played the best football in the world. The 41-year-old led them to 13 titles, including two Champions League trophies. Pete Jensen, a football columnist in Barcelona, was at tonight's media conference. He has more on the changing of the guard. I just think he's uh, exhausted, um, as he said in the press conference the other day, in four seasons, in two of those four seasons, they played every single game possible. 13 trophies out of a possible 16. It's completely unprecedented. And... Um, you know, it's one of the toughest jobs in football. The, um, the demands are high, and he just feels that he needs a break. What now remains to be seen is whether that break will take him to the end of the summer and he will then take a job at the start of next season, or whether it will be a full season away from the game. Uh, Tito Villanova was his number two, has been his number two during this, these four years. Uh, the, he, he responded to a question about how the dressing room had accepted that, uh, and he said they'd accepted it um, with lots of enthusiasm. It's a... It's a, it's a popular decision. Uh, everyone at the club believes that it will bring continuity. He was his right-hand man and and uh, the fans are happy and it's taken away some of the sadness that Guardiola is not going to carry on. Staying with football, it will be an all-Spanish final in the Europa League on 9th of May. Athletic Bilbao reached their first European final in 35 years, beating Sporting Lisbon 3-1 in their semi-final second leg for a 4-3 aggregate win. Fernando Llorente grabbed the dramatic winner just two minutes before the match would have gone into extra time. Bilbao will face 2010 winners Atletico Madrid, who beat Valencia 1-0 in the other match. Adrian Lopez netted the only goal at the Mestalla. They advanced 5-2 on aggregate, but will be without midfielder Thiago for the final after he picked up a red card. Our last stop is a top American college where students have a smashing celebration for the last day they can drop classes without it going on their records. This broken piano is key to the ritual at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. The 40-year-old tradition is now an official event, and MIT has made a name for itself for helping people get rid of their broken pianos for free. This year, there was even a spare piano for the falling instrument to land on, but some students expected a bigger bang. I was expecting a grandeur of noise. And yeah, you're waiting for that twang when yes. it hits and everything just goes boing. But, you know, it was a thud, but it was still really cool. It's a fun I mean. thud, yeah. It's such an institution that when an MIT alumna became an astronaut, she took a salvaged piano key with her into space. The pianos, though, remain firmly grounded in tradition. You've been with News 5 tonight. Good night.